my heroes in East Africa, both on and off the court. A big salute from the Bakay crew and a warm welcome to the only show about basketball culture in the region. It's your host, Silali Award, together with Mr. D. You ain't got nothing on him, GZ. GZ! And you're getting better, like, you know, at introducing me. Thank you so much. Are you going to start paying me or? No, uh, never, ever. But you know what? I appreciate you and what you do for Bakay. You mm -hmm. know what's going on? I just want to send a big shout out to my dogs, y'all. All my dogs, you know, from the sausage dogs to the hot dogs, you know what I mean? To the chihuahuas out there, to even the pools. They're trying to bark <laughs> like they're German shepherds, you know what I mean? All y'all, my dogs. And you know what? Welcome to the home of the biggest dogs in the game. I'm talking about the home of the USIU Flames right here. Now, DNG, that trash talk that you had against Desert University last week um, has caused quite a stir in that community. For those of you who missed out on last week's episode, here's what DNG had to say to the Daystar team. They start like a chihuahua. Have you ever seen a chihuahua? Yes. Chihuahuas are those dogs, they're just, you know, small dogs, man, like, they're like sausage dogs yeah. that got a makeover. But and squished a bit. Yeah, squished a bit, they're like, compacted in like a box. <laughs> he's got the loudest bark, but he's got the softest bite. It's like, are you serious? Are you serious right now? <laughs> now That's Daystar. This right. Daystar, baby. Get out me, dog. Woof. <laughs> 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 now, D. Yo. Daystar University came back with a comeback. For me? For you. And me. You, you need, you know, you need to see this, dude. You need to see this. Bro, this is DNG. This is what we're going to do with you. It's all right here, man. It's all that's what we could do, do you That's homie? right. That's Come right. Come out here, homie. That's right. That's what we do, homie. Yeah. <laughs> Stay on TV, boy. Stay on TV. Let me say this. Write a reply, you know what I mean? No, no, but it was funny, though. It's not funny. You were, imagine you're the dude who was doing this. The guy is laughing at his own jokes. What comedian <laughs> laughs at his own jokes? Unless you're crazy, you must be Madarekis, you know? But something else that I, I watched and I was like, are this guy serious? You see the guy trying to dunk? Like, that was like slow motion, to so boring, you know? Like, I, I couldn't clap for that. But you know, what I just want to tell Daystar, like, sincerely, yo, you're not even two hours anymore. You know, I think, like, their pools have been rained on, you know what I mean? Like, they're cold and they're freezing and they're trying to get in the house. You know what I mean? Where it's warm and there's a fireplace. But you know what? After the guy wow. did a slow motion dunk, you're not even a poodle, y'all. Like, y'all are like pussy cats. You know what I mean? Like pussy. Any are uh, pussy. You know what I mean? Any. You, uh, dude. <laughs> meow. Dude, you know no, I mean? no, like, no. Listen, you're, you're taking this thing way too personally. I mean, did you apply to this university and then they rejected you? That's why you ended up here. No, I've always been in the big league, USIU. You know what I mean? That's where I did my undergrad and I'm mm -hmm. back there doing my global executive MBA. Okay, that's what's yeah, up. It's deep like that. Big, big dog things. You know what I mean? Pussy cat. Okay. See you. All Pussy right. in boots. O okay. That's clearly a soft spot for DNG. But all right, folks, moving swiftly onwards. We've seen various aspects of the previous seasons of the ZUBL, but I know there's one thing you guys have been really yearning for. Here are the top and the best plays from the first season. Here we go to play it again. They got all the fans excited. There, John Omiya with a dunk inside. What a game. Over 2,000 people here in Eldoret watching this final game. We take a try for the same. Rejected. Luya again with the ball, takes it in, and look at him. Then the steal in the middle of the, the, middle of the floor. I have eight goes in and blocked by Joseph Omar. From, uh, from way there he is. I mean, there he is. He, I mean, then he goes on the move, gets the feeling, and that's what we talked about. You can... Another long, uh, long. But you know that it's a that it's a pass. <laughs> there he is. Did not handle the Inside, oh, David Macharia, no foul ball. Here comes USIU back the other way. Oh. And, uh, this is Silla. 
What a season for basketball, DNG. Indeed, Tulele, what a season. And you know what? We are going to be seeing more and more of that, especially with the influx of these brand new teams. I'm talking about the new kids on the block. Strathmore, St. Paul's, Nazarene University, who has some seriously huge players. Yes, and let's not forget about the Western Conference. And what's really cool, last season they gave us Nicolas Anyang and George Chiarie. The Western Conference cannot be overlooked. Mm. As a matter of fact, I think a team from the West is going to take it all this year. You sure about that? If, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. 100%? Not 100%, but mm. I got that feeling. All right, let's see what our fans think. And you know what? The Bake crew went to Moi University in Eldoret to hang out with the finest hoopers from the Western Conference. <laughs> After this, we're going to be singing a milli, a milli, milli, milli. Nikum Bricha. I'm just saying it, man. I can see on my two see body when he never knock over the Rudy Pony. Oh, you want to make up a show? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. One, two, three. So, come on. I said, I'm what a sucker daggy. Let me do your you like when you game one night. Ah, when I quench your thirst. Where? Kaba Kampa said, Doris. This is Kaba the passion. The season we were not really a strong team as we currently are. The team to watch out was MKU Nakuru, but apparently we hear MKU Nakuru are out of the playoffs, so we think we can take this. When you compare this season and the previous season, I think this time round there is a lot of improvement in all the teams. They have improved their, their strategies and therefore you realize that there is a difference between the, the two plays. And this one is far much better than the previous game. Yeah, this season we were very ready. Yeah, we were very ready. Come right I gotta do what I gotta do to make them dreams come true. So I'm just speaking about me, speaking of you. So if you don't like me, then I don't like you too. And I'm gonna do my success to the best now. We have an advantage over the other countries in that in Eldoret, we have a, a togetherness spirit. Even if we play for different teams, we support each other till the end. Whoever wins, whoever loses, we're still together. We're planning to break the domination of Nairobi people, you know. They dominate, they have leagues, but we want to try and limit their domination in terms of basketball. We want to prove that we also have good basketball here in Eldoret. I cannot let another team walk over me just to represent me in the finals. I want to be in the finals myself. Huh? I want to play nationwide. I want to go further than nationals. So there is no way I'm going to let any other team walk over me. This season we are privileged to have two more added teams. That is Square University Eldoret and School of Medicine, Moi. Uh, because that, in fact, this increases a lot of competition with the, among us ourselves. It helps us to meet new, new teams and make us work harder because sometimes you may get used to these teams which are around here and we relax because we understand their play. <laughs> so being new in the, in the league is actually fantastic. Last year we had to be, we had to watch the games from either telly or the bench, which was uh, kind of not fun. Uh, we had that hard, we really wanted to participate in the Zuko basketball league. We can now challenge any team, even from other conferences. Toko basketball in Washington, they are ready to challenge them at any time, at any place. <laughs> If we were to play with any team from Nairobi, we'll choose USAU. 
Hey, all teams are threats. I can mention University of Nairobi. A message from Moi West Campus, Captain Brian. Please watch out for us. Don't take us as a joke. Welcome back to Bar K. The Western Conference always graces us with some seriously awesome basketball. So time to check out some of the game's highlights. Saturday afternoon, first leg of the ZUBL sees Moy University, Maine in the black and red take on the University of Eldred in the blue. UOE setting the tone with a baseline jumper from number nine, Maxwell Odwar. Odwar at the top of the key. Quick game of hot potato and number eight, Cliff Mumbo, knocks it down inside. Moy Main trying to force the ball into the post and it's stolen. It's a long pass to point guard Joshua Muruge who is wide open for the easy lay-in. It's University of Eldoret again with the possession who are absolutely dominating this game. Odwar shaking and baking at the top of the key, knocks down the J. Number 13, Paul Ekasa decides to go for it, not a chance. He went up with a right hand on a left hand layup, didn't protect the ball, and that's what you get. And we see Moi Main with another turnover that cost them as University of Eldoret capitalized on every mistake. Odwar again from his sweet spot. Moi Main's big man Matthew Otieno manages to beat two opponents and gets his team two points. UOE with a response on the other end as number five Isaiah Kiyaka proves that he too can take on several defenders. It's a close game as things wind down here in the fourth quarter. Bullet pass from Musioka to number 13, Paul Ikaba with a strong finish. It was a nail biter in the final minutes, but University of Eldred go on to win it 39 to 30 points. Our second game for the afternoon gives MKU Eldred in the white and blue the opportunity to challenge Moy University main campus. There we see the Moy main team planning their strategy for this game after already losing a close game today. It's never a great thing to lose on your home court and Moy main with the opportunity to redeem themselves. MKU already punishing in the first quarter. There's a scuffle in the paint for the ball, but number 12, Jeff Lumumba, battles to get it and soars above his opponents for the baby J. And the home crowd loves it. Number 12, Giorgio Yo silences the crowd with a flawless three. Lumumba at the top of the key, gets it to go. Moy Main Campus coming alive as number 11 Boas Sunday with the fancy Euro step. We have a game, ladies and gentlemen. But MKU Eldoret's Oyo has a hot hand and is making sure that his team maintains a solid lead. It's back and forth as Lumumba, who is seemingly unstoppable in the paint, makes sure his team stays in it. However, MKU Eldred are showing more poise and organization on the court as they fight for every possession. Whether it's the putback, the fast break opportunity, or their many steals. Despite having the home crowd support, MKU Eldred are riding a train that can't be stopped as we see the Moy main team realizing that they've lost their second game of the day on home court. MKU Eldera take the win 59 points to Moy Main's 47. And that's it for this week's game of the week. Now over to the professor with another lesson in the fundamentals of basketball. And indeed, some great games from the Western Conference as expected. Today, we shall continue our lessons on basketball fundamentals and we're going to touch on the passing skill. The first lesson that we must teach the players is stance. Stance is the most basic skill that must be taught to every player to make them effective and efficient. How does wrong stance affect how you pass the ball? I have noticed, for example, some of the players have got their feet too close to each other. This makes them imbalanced because they don't have a low uh, center of gravity 
it's easy to defend somebody who is imbalanced because once you just nudge them a little bit, you get them off their passing angle. Two, it becomes very difficult to give the right pass when you're upright. The other problem I notice in very many of the players is that they have got their, their feet too wide apart. Too wide apart makes you also imbalanced because now you're too low and you're, you're easy to be, to be defended. Two, you cannot be able to see the other players on the court. So what is the correct stance? Like we mentioned last week, it is important that each player understands the triple threat position. And what is a triple threat position? We said feet shoulder width apart, knees 90 degrees bent, back straight, eyes on target. Today we are going to learn the four basic passes that each and every player of basketball needs to know. Because as we know, basketball is a situation of sport and therefore you cannot use the same pass for different situations. What are these passes? The first type is a chest pass. And as the name denotes, it simply means the pass is coming from the chest of the passer to the chest of the receiver. If it goes anywhere else, it's not a chest pass. It has to go chest to chest. The second type of pass is a bounce pass. And as the name denotes, the ball must bounce off the floor to the receiver. So the passer needs to be able to bounce the ball on the floor of the basketball court to the receiver. The third type of pass is the overhead pass. The overhead pass, as it denotes, the passer holds the ball above their head and passes to the same level. It means the receiver also receives the pass above their head. And last is the baseball pass. The baseball pass is a slight variation of the overhead pass because in this instance you're using one hand and it's like you're throwing a baseball or throwing a javelin. But please remember that the stance must be right and two, you always have to step into your pass and you must have a follow through for the passer and the receiver must have a target. And that concludes the lesson for the week. As we all appreciate, basketball is ultimately a scoring game. And therefore, next week, we're going to go into the art of shooting. Bake is going to go into a short break and when we come back, we're going to touch on the importance of scouting and youth development. basically means identifying talent. Seeing kids that have potential to be, they're not necessarily already there, uh, and then being able to track them as time goes. I want to believe there's a lot of talent, it's only that uh, people have not been able to nurture that talent. As scouts, we help encourage the kids, we give them hope and aspiration, because when they know they're being watched, they work harder. When their coaches know they're being watched, they make them play better. They also take more time with them to develop them individually. Many coaches get the reputation through the amount of players that they've developed, that they've formed, that they've created. When I'm identifying talent, the two things I look at, first it's the physique, that's the physical appearance of the player. This being basketball, there's a particular physique we're looking for. Having some good height is an advantage, though not the main thing. I also look at the, the skills that the players have. Personally, as a coach, I can see a player and I can tell you how far that player can go because I've been in this game for the last uh, almost 20 years, both as a coach and as a player. And uh, you'll find that their players maybe, if they are not given a chance to show their talent, they cannot go very far. Some kids at the age of 15, 16 already are that good. So this kid, you know that if he's put in the right environment, if the training is done properly, he has the potential to do even much more than he was doing. The importance is to help build that momentum, is to help nurture that and be able to detect so that the talent doesn't fizzle out. Because if you don't do it at an early age, what you do is you have a bunch of guys who are 20, 22, that are good, but have been wasted. So early talent detection helps you be able to put these guys in the right setup so they can maximize on their talent early enough. The potential for basketball development is tremendous. 
initiatives like what Giants of Africa is, is doing and other NGO on the continent that are using basketball as a platform to reach young people. Obviously you teach the fundamentals of the game but also you tie in the life skill element. It's about you know affording young, young Africans uh, the opportunity to live their dreams. We want to teach the skill uh, and basic fundamental of the game to young kids in Africa. And are these the best kids? We try to get the best kids. Projects like Giants of Africa, Basketball on Land Borders, Seed Academy in Senegal, what they help is that they always give a platform where coaches from the US, especially African coaches that have grown out of this system and have gone and have learned, can come and can impart their knowledge on other younger coaches in Africa. The benefits that the player gets from being scouted is if he has the right potential, he puts himself in a position to be more successful. I'll give you a simple example locally. After the Giants of Africa camp, there's a kid, Carl Arum, that we discovered from Mangu. He's a Form 4 student, 17 years old. From that camp, he got a selection to go down to Mombasa. He played with KPA in the Zone 5 Senior Men's Challenge. It was a nice experience, mainly because of the exposure. Uh, you got to, to be coached by some of the international coaches who coached at the, at the highest level. Well, I was the first high schooler to play in an international tournament, played against the, some of the best international players in Africa. I mean, they're doing awesome things trying to go to grow the sport in Africa, uh, trying to, to go everywhere, every, mostly in Africa, trying to grow the sport, holding cups, inviting people. Carl Arum is a talented uh, boy. We groomed him and saw that uh, he could play very good basketball. Uh, so we started training him in Form 1. Scouting for these kids um, at an early age is advantageous because it avoids rewinding of players in the, in the national teams and all other clubs, uh, championships that we may be having. A couple of players from Africa that have gone out because of scouting, a player, Akim Olajuwon, first of all, was one of the first guys. He was got out of Nigeria. Just because of scouting, somebody saw him, sent footage to the US. Dikembe Mutombo. Serge Ibaka was scouted during the tournament in Congo. That's how he went to Europe, to Belgium, first and played. Hashim Tabit was scouted after East African high school games here in Africa. As long as we keep giving back, you know, um uh, uh, the players get better, uh, kids uh, use basketball as a tool and uh, somehow get one or two messages from what we're trying to do here, I think it's, it's huge for us. Well, DNG, you heard it from the Toronto Raptors general manager himself. Africa is full of raw basketball talent. Indeed, and even wrote an article on CNN.com titled Why Africans Will Be the Basketball Stars of Tomorrow. Absolutely, absolutely. And we have history in the NBA. Mm. From Dikembe Mutombo to Luol Deng, I believe things are only going to get better and better as long as we have the will to improve facilities and the sports infrastructure. And what's really cool is that if the investment in the ZUBL is anything to go by, then we are definitely headed in the right direction. I completely agree, DNG. Now, unfortunately, it's that time for us to head oh. out, but you need to hit him with those social media links. TikTok, TikTok, send us a tweet using at Barkay Nation, and there's a hashtag. Hit him with it. Discover the passion. If you're on Facebook, go to our page, that's Barkay. We also have an amazing website, www.zubl.org. So that's it. That's it. You haven't got anything, you know, final trash talk words for the people at home. The guy was trying to dunk slow motion. Uh -huh. Ako chini, man. That gets chini, bana. You guys, you cannot dunk, bana. Go and swim. <laughs> that is what you need to be doing. Swimming.